Morning all. John, um, we're going to dive into the president's trip yesterday, but just your broad stroke thoughts over the last couple of days. You've got a piece talking about the power of a president's words. Yes, I mean, I think it's been a moment where there's clearly a vacuum of the kind of leadership that Franklin Roosevelt described in 1932, before, even before he became president. He said that the presidency is not an engineering job, it, it's not an administrative job, it's pre preeminently a place of moral leadership. And I actually mean that not simply in the consoler in chief, which is a, a, new, yeah. a new cliche. Um, you know, it's like saying, we got this. Uh, it, it sort of entered that, uh, that place. It, you know, what we need is someone who speaks to the best part of us and uses the power of the office to make the country demonstrably safer and better. And that, that's where the president has fallen down again and again and again. And so my own view is that Joe Biden and Cory Booker and Beto O'Rourke stepped in and actually played that role over the last 72 hours or so. Yeah, and we're going to hear from all three of those men. Your pieces in Time Magazine. We'll dig into it a bit more. President Trump traveled to Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas yesterday, the two cities where last weekend's mass shootings took place, meeting with first responders, city officials, and victims to console those two hurting American communities. But the day also took on an air of politics, with the president a number of times turning his attention from those grieving to airing his own grievances, with Twitter outbursts that spanned the day going after Joe Biden, the press, Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio, the mayor of Dayton, Democrats in general, cable news anchors, and many more. The president seemed concerned with controlling the appearance of his visits, releasing videos of his meetings with medical staff, victims, and first responders with music. And in El Paso late yesterday, he continued concerned with even mild criticism, responding with more personal attacks. President Trump, you said today was about killing the unity, and you've been talking about the number of your critics, like President Biden, Senator Brown, uh, Mayor Wade, as well as various members of the media. Can you explain well, why? Well, they shouldn't be politicking. Yeah, they shouldn't be politicking today. Uh, I had it with Sherrod Brown. Uh, he and the mayor, Nan Wally, uh, they asked uh, to go in. Could we possibly go in and make the tour with you? I said, yeah, let's do it. I took them in at their request. We made the tour. They couldn't believe it. She said it to people. He said it to people. I get on Air Force One, where they do have a lot of televisions. I turn on the television, and there they are saying, well, I don't know if it was appropriate for the president to be here, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, the same old line. And they're very dishonest people, and that's probably why he got, I think, about 0 percent that he failed as a presidential candidate. About that news conference the president mentioned, Ohio's Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown and Dayton Mayor Nan Wally spoke to reporters after their hospital visit with the president. Both said they pressed for action on gun reform and said the president was well received despite any differences they may have with him. Both the mayor and I asked the president to call on Senator McConnell to, move, to bring the Senate back in session this week to tell the Senate that he wants the, um, the background checks bill that has already passed the House, that he wants it on the floor. I asked the president to promise to me and to the American people that he will sign that bill after he's spoken out in support of it with Senator McConnell. Um, he was only said that we will get things done. I think he heard me. Uh, I don't know if he will take action. I'm hoping for the people of Dayton that he does. But we, you know, both the senator and I spoke um, very directly uh, what we've been saying the whole time about the need for common sense gun legislation. He was received well by the patients, as yes. you'd expect. I mean, They're hurting. He, what did he say to them? Well, he was comforting, was and he nice. did the right things, and Melania did the right things. The people at the hospital were terrific, and people showed, when the President of the United States came, they showed respect for the office. And a number of them said to me they're not great admirers of him privately, but they clearly showed respect for the office. I think the victims and the first responders were grateful that the President of the United States came to Dayton. That's Mayor Whaley of Dayton right there. Shortly after that press conference, the president tweeted about the tremendous enthusiasm and love during the visit. Quote, then I saw failed presidential candidate, zero percent Sherrod Brown, and Mayor Whaley totally misrepresenting what took place inside the hospital. 
Their news conference after I left for El Paso was a fraud. Hmm. You heard what they just said. Senator Brown, who chose not to run in 2020, put out a statement reading in part, quote, I've said before Donald Trump is a bully and bullies are cowards. The people of Dayton deserve a president more focused on protecting them from gun violence than protecting his own ego. Mayor Whaley reacted this way when she was shown the president's tweets. I don't, I mean, like, I, I'm really confused. We said he was treated, like, very well, so. I'd love to hear what was. I don't know what they're talking about misrepresenting, so. Oh, well, you know, he lives in this world of Twitter. Some of President Trump's staffers also criticized Mayor Whaley and Senator Brown for their news conference. Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham tweeted in part, it is genuinely sad to see them immediately hold such a dishonest press conference in the name of partisan politics. And Dan Scavino, the White House Director of Social Media, tweeted, very sad to see Ohio Senator Brown and Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley lying and completely mischaracterizing what took place with the president's visit to Miami Valley Hospital today. They are disgraceful politicians doing nothing but politicizing a mass shooting at every turn they can. Scavino went on, the president was treated like a rock star inside the hospital which was all caught on video. Washington Post reporter Ashley Parker, who was part of the White House press pool yesterday, points out that it's unclear if what Scavino says is true because the press pool was not allowed to witness anything. She tweeted, we were told the president wanted to avoid a photo op, though the White House did put out photos of their own. Um, okay, let's, let's walk through this a little bit, Jonathan Lemire. This is your beat. Uh, the president, Senator Brown said himself, Mayor Whaley said herself the president was well received. So what are the White House staffers talking about? What were they so upset about in that press conference? So this is a day where President Trump spent most of it playing the victim when he was standing amid victims of two mass shootings. What happened yesterday was the, this was an attempt for the White House to try to control some sort of the narrative or imagery of this day. It began with President Trump on the White House South Lawn scolding the media for trying to make this a political event, warning other politicians not to do that, though at the same time he pointed out the alleged political beliefs of the Dayton shooter, uh, and then proceeded to get on the plane and head to uh, Ohio. As, as Ashley pointed out, reporters there were not able to actually witness him interacting with patients. And that's, that's understandable. That happens. These are people who are recovering right. their privacy issues and so on. Um, at that first stop, though, at the very least, he seemed to hit the right notes. We're, local officials said there he did fine. And you just saw that news conference where the senator and the mayor largely praised what he did and said he was, he was treated well. Now, the senator did suggest that he had problems with some of the president's divisive rhetoric, so it may be that is what the White House was responding to, but that sort of set off an onslaught the rest of the day from Air Force One, from the president himself and his staff attacking, going on the attack on a day when they, the, the mission was to, to console, to, to, to be there, to pledge federal government's help, to be there to, to suggest this will never not let this tragedies, tragedies like these happen again. And yet he turned it a day, as he so often does, into about himself. And we saw that and it went from tweet to tweet to tweet. He went after Joe Biden for his very critical speech handling about the president's rhetoric and suggesting that he helped inspire this violence. He went after the, the officials there in Ohio. He went after the officials in Texas. He went after Congressman Castro. You know, seemingly he went after the media. Time and time again, he, as we have seen him so often do, when he's behind closed doors meeting privately with someone, he can be, he can be conciliatory, he can be charming, he can pledge help. But then when he retreats to the safety of whether it's the White House residence or yesterday, his cabin on Air Force One, and he watches the cable news coverage, and he gets upset by what he sees, he turns to Twitter, and he lashes out, and any sense of unity or healing is put aside. And at least some of these tweets took place, by the way, on the way between the two sites. So he visited victims in one place while he was in the air on Air Force One. He starts tweeting about Joe Biden. We'll hear from Joe Biden. He made a speech yesterday uh, in the vein of what John Meacham was talking about, more of a conciliatory healing speech. Um, the president can't help himself. You would think perhaps if there were a day where he could help himself, yesterday might have been it. I just can't imagine having met with victims who survived right. a traumatic mass shooting and seeing these victims recovering in a hospital and then the first thing that you start to do is lash out at the media, lash out at political opposition and remove yourself from the sanctity of 
witnessing and grieving this incredible loss, it is just unimaginable to me how broken you have to be as a human being, that this is your first response heading to El Paso where such a massacre just occurred. And the Hispanic community in particular feels like they have a target on their back because they did in that El Paso Walmart. And if you read the manifesto, if you read that first paragraph, it is absolutely chilling. And Donald Trump is completely incapable of doing anything that's not about himself. We know that. We should just accept it. But I think this is a moment that we're looking to other leaders to lead. And so good for Joe Biden with his speech yesterday. Good for Beto O'Rourke. Good for Cory Booker with his amazing speech. I hope that other leaders can fill the gap because we certainly aren't seeing it from Donald Trump and we aren't seeing it from any Republicans who remain incapable of condemning the president's racism and extremism. Shannon, extremism. you wrote, you covered yesterday, you wrote an account of it that reads, Trump turns a day of grieving for El Paso and Dayton shooting victims into a day of grievances. Uh, as I said, we heard from Senator Brown and Mayor Whaley who both said the president was good inside the hospital, that he was well received by the patients inside the hospital. So what was his gripe specifically with what they said at that press conference? Well, that took all of us covering the White House some time to figure out because we were all going through the transcript of Sherrod Brown and uh, Mayor, uh, the mayor's press conference trying to figure out what that was. And finally, we had to get from Stephanie Grisham, the press secretary, uh, essentially saying that she felt the um, mayor and the senator should have emphasized how happy everyone in the hospital was to see the president and that they did not characterize the enthusiasm at the hospital like that is one of the most important things to be conveyed out of this visit um, it, you know so it was a very odd uh, tweet to see that had left us scratching our heads of course but it did fit into a pattern of a very odd day and when you step back and look at this through a political lens and I'll do that because my brain kind of lives in 2020 as the incumbent president, the advantage you have is you have the office of the presidency where you can look presidential. You can look like the, you know, the trite phrase or whatever at this point, but the consoler in chief. You can have these sort of hero moments. And the president, all he did yesterday was detract from that by launching these attacks. And I know that the president's supporters will say, he was only punching back. And these were people who had been criticizing him for days, and he was he was fighting back. But the criticism they have been launching is around his rhetoric, around his policies, and around his actions. And the criticism that the president is firing back is really has nothing to do with policy. It's about uh, making fun of Beto O'Rourke's name, um, Shep Smith's ratings, calling Joe Biden sleepy and boring. It's not a policy conversation. It's attack on people's appearance and people's personalities. Uh, and that's where I, I really see this disconnect where we're so outside of the normal political attacking and back and forth because there's no policy conversation going on from the president at this point. It does take a different kind of person to see what the president saw in that hospital than get on the plane and tweet what he tweeted, put his head in that place. We should point out, too, he called Sherrod Brown a failed presidential candidate with zero percent. Sherrod Brown's never run for president. He considered it and then decided in March not to run. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.